Good morning, Fred friends. It's a new week. It is Monday morning. It's around about 6.45 in the morning. I've been up since 3 a.m. because my wife is flying to Canada today. I dropped her off at the train station at around about 4.30, 4.45 this morning. So I've been up and about. And I, today, am working on one of my own guitars. And I'm not really working. I'm just going to customise this fantastic USA Telecaster I bought a few weeks ago. I absolutely love this guitar. What a beauty. This is the older version. It's a 2007, so you don't get the belly cut. And you do get the but you get the earlier pickups, which are standard, which are fine, which are brilliant. Uh, but when I bought this, I realised that the volume pot had seized, the switch had seized, which I fixed, no problem. Um, and the these string grommet, what are they called? Ferrules. These ferrules aren't right, one's odd. So I bought a set of brand new ones and I'm going to, mod I'm going to modify this guitar a little bit, customise it and I'm going to stick a humbucker in there. And I've not got anything super fancy, I've stuck to a tried and tested pickup brand that I've been using for many many years and it is an Artec pickup. There you go, can't remember the name of it, but it's made by Artec, made in Korea. It's a TRA73C. That is the model. It is around about Full humbucker is around about 12k ohms output, so it's six per bar. It's going to give me that real good chunky sound, isn't it? That I'm going to use. I'm going to split the coils I have got in front of me, an array, a, a huge array of pots. And these are push push pots, 500k alpha pots. I'm going to stick one of them in. I also have a bag full of 300k pots there. I do have one specifically for a um, Telecaster which is that one, so that is going to be the volume, because it's a volume pot. I also have other pots knocking about, I have various custom demands, I've got loads of pots. I've got bags full of them, proper Fender CTS ones, all there. That'll be my wife being in, she's again on the train. I'm going to ignore it for a second. I will just turn down my phone. So she'll just let me know she's arriving in London at 7.38am, which is fantastic, gives her two three hours to get to uh, to get to the airport and get a plane but anyway let's carry on with the guitar i'm also going to put in a four-way switch and i didn't go and buy a oak grigsby one i bought a i think it's from wd music same thing but this is a four-way one two three four it'll give me the extra um, bridge and neck pickup in is it in series or in parallel or out of phase or some other fancy one anyway it gives it a nice big boost so that'll be going in there but what I need to do is the push pull pot will be going there and the cavity is not deep enough so I'm going to remove the plate I'm going to route inside there now the thing is there is a, an earth screw in there and I don't want to route too deep that the earth screw will go through the back of the guitar. I've measured the thickness of the guitar, the body. It's 45 millimeters thick. I need, uh, with the um, push-pull pot, I'm gonna need 33 millimeters clearance. It means I can leave 12 millimeters thickness at the back of the guitar, uh, which is good, which means I'll still have enough room for the screw. The screw uh, that holds the earth wire in there is eight millimeters. So we're not gonna poke through the back of the guitar. I'm gonna route the whole cavity um, something I'm going to do later. So that really is it. I won't be doing anything else to the guitar. The neck is fine. The cosmetics and everything else is fine. I just want to, I want a four way switch. I want the push pull on the bridge. New pickup in there. I'm going to leave the original neck pickup because that sounds fantastic. The guitar is brilliant. And if I like this pickup and I get the sound I want with the pots I'm going to use, like I say, I'm going to keep the original, I'm not keeping original anything in there. I could keep I could keep the 250 volume. I don't know yet. Let me just stick I'll stick the push pull in there and we'll see where we are. But I do have some 300 Ks. Um, I'm more interested to find out what this sounds like and how good it is. So I've got to crack on with that. Um, don't think I'm gonna film anything major. If I have any problems, I will come back and let you know. But I've got to completely strip the guitar, which I will do. Scratch plates coming off, the pickups are coming out, all the electrics are coming out, the bridge is coming off. And uh, then we can work on sorting out that cavity. I will come and show you the state of the cavity before I route in there in a few minutes. So stay tuned and I will see you soon. So, good stuff. We've moved on a bit. 
Um, and my wife has just got to Heathrow uh, two hours before her flight, so that's fantastic. Everything's going according to plan. And now let's show you where we are. And there is the guitar body, and I have masked this area with three layers of Scotch 3M low tack tape. Uh, just so the router is going to work smoothly. I'm going to basically clamp this down and I'm going to route inside this cavity. I'm going to leave this centre bit, I think, because I don't need to remove that. But I'm going to route inside the cavity down to a depth of 33 millimetres, which will give me enough clearance for the push push pot in there and all the other electrics. And I'll still have enough room to put in the earth screw. I might just even leave this little bit in the middle for the earth screw because I don't need. That doesn't need to be removed unless I'm going to swap the control plate around, which I don't think I'm going to do. So I think I could just leave that in there. If I really, really wanted to though, I could go a little bit deeper. Now I'm going to check the depth of this one and see if I can get a screw in there. I might bore a hole in there just to check it, but I don't really think I need to. So I'm going to get this all clamped up and get, get my router out. I'm going to use a... Um, I'll be using a 12mm diameter route a bit I imagine I'll plunge down to a depth of 33 millimeters no more than that I'm wondering if that's uh, like an insulating paint in there no idea I do have some copper tape if I wanted to mess about and if I was going to mess about and line all that I would then definitely route everything down to 33 mil the new pickup that's going in is already in the plate I'll show them what it is it's an Artec Great pickup, I hope it's going to do what I want it to do. Yeah, I think it should do. It looks fine. It looks going to work, should work really well in there. So I'm going to crack on. I'm not going to film me routing. Um, I also need to change the switch and pots on this control plate. I could leave the volume, but I have bought a 300k one for the volume. Uh, it's a shame I didn't get a 300k push push pot because that may have worked better. I might go online and look for one. Um, I will use one of my Mollard mustard capacitors, not this one that came with the guitar. And obviously I've got my new four-way switch which will be going in there. So, I'll come back again soon. Okay, so I've routed the cavity at this end. We've got it to a depth of 33.5mm, which is perfect. It gives me 11.5mm clearance for the earth screw it's going to go in there somewhere and that will have an 8mm thread length so I'm going to have still 4mm to play with so I don't screw the screw out of the back of the guitar what I will do is I will start the hole off with the bradle I'm not going to drill in there but the good thing about this now is the cavity fits obviously this fits in the cavity fine the uh, push push pot fits in with room to spare about 2mm to spare which is great but also if I wanted to turn the control plate around like some people do I could have the four way at this end I could have the volume there and the tone there swapping them around some people do do that we do put a reverse switch on there I could absolutely do that and have a four way that way so that is another option I don't think I want to reverse my control cavity I'm quite happy having the switch where it is I'm quite happy having the switch at that end Oh, it should go. Uh, I could try it reverse. I don't know. Do I really want to faff about with that? I'm not sure. But what I do need to do is I need to route all the earthing options. Make sure I get a earth wire under the bridge itself. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and route that right round to the cavity. And uh, that is about it. I just want to show why I'm here. I'll show what um, router bits I use. I buy them from... I buy them from wieldandtools.com. It's the only place I've ever been. And I buy my router bits from there. Uh, the one I've got in is a, I think it's a one inch cut on a 12.7 diameter uh, with a, is it a quarter shank? Probably a quarter shank. Um, I'll see if I can show you. The router I use, I don't know a lot about routers. I just asked someone what would be a decent ish, not too expensive router. And they said, get the trend. So I went and bought the Trend T, is it the Trend T4? There you go, and there's a router bit if you want to see it from Wilden, Wilden Tools. And I'll give it a clean, I'll put it back in its little oiled sachet and then back in its tube. You see that's a long one there, just stick that on the floor out of the way. I always unplug the router when I'm not using it, I never ever leave it plugged in because uh, 
I don't have a lot of experience with routers and I don't want to have an accident, go trying to change a bit and uh, still got plugged in. There's the other one and that is, I believe, probably a 12 mil or a 12 and a half mil or maybe it's just a 10 mil cutter on there. These are template cutting bits. Um, the only ones I've ever bought, I, I've not needed any other bits yet. Everything I do is with a template or with, with the hole already cut, which acts as a template. So it's just the way I like to do things. At the moment, I will get more into using, working with wood, routing and building and body shaping and everything at a later date. But for now, um, I'm gonna move on to getting the electric sorted out, get the new pots on there, get the new uh, switch on there and we will have a go at getting these pickups wired in properly. Right, Frank friends, small change of plan, um, and I've started wiring the controls. And very neat and nice they are. Uh, but what I've decided to do is, I changed the 500k push-push, you can see it is a push-push, I've got it all wired in. I changed it for a 250k. Uh, I'm gonna stick with basically a standard wiring system. I have changed the volume pot for a 300k and what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap, I'll put a resistor in there, uh, not a resistor, a capacitor, I stock Mullard mustard capacitors, these are old, new old stock and I'll put a 0, uh, 0.022 in there, I'm going to change it for 0 0.047 I think, um, I could leave it in there. I think, I'm. Just, but what I'm thinking is I'm going to go just with a standard Telecaster wiring just with the push pull. And hopefully it won't change too much. Now the way I've got the four way in, and the way I wire this is quite different. Because what happens is when we have a bridge pickup on its own, it tends to buzz a little bit. And what we have to do is we have to uh, separate the cover on the neck pickup, the ground. Uh, we have to ground it separately from the actual ground on the pick. You've got one hot wire and one common wire on a pickup. And we normally ground the casing, the metal case of a Telecaster neck pickup with the common or the ground on the pickup. We're not going to do it, we're going to separate them. Uh, we need to be split and it stops the buzzing on the bridge pickup. So I'm going to have to do that. So it's again, special kind of wiring. Really, really in a quandary with this uh, capacitor because I'm thinking, should I be using a 0.022? You know, for argument's sake, I might as well just leave that in just for now and get it all wired up see what it's like when it's in. As you can see, I'm doing everything real neat. I have my iPad in front of me with um, six string supplies instruction on how to wire for a four way on a Telecaster. So I'm gonna follow that description. The only difference I'm gonna have is my two coil wires are gonna go onto this push, push part so we can split those coils. Something I've noticed I have done here, I've ground this lug. I don't need to ground that lug. I'm going to cut that wire off and I'm going to desolder that because I just need the hot wire going from there to the hot wire on the volume. So I need that ground to come off and I'm going to ground this pot to this pot directly over this side. So I know what I'm doing, I'm going to get on with it. I'm not going to film any of it, I will get it all wired up. I'll leave a couple of wires loose because I need to wire the pickups in there as well. So we're going to have two wires to certain lugs on the four-way switch. Uh, but I will get as much done as I possibly can and I will come back and show you the results shortly. So, oh, following the um, diagram from Six String Supplies, which I got from their website, which is free to download, and I have a video on it in front of me on my iPad, I have done the wiring. I'm going to come close up so you can see what I've done there. And there you go. And that really is pretty neat. And what I've done is taken the hot wire from lug three to lug one, lug three of a tone to lug one of a volume, from lug one of a volume round to lug number eight on the four way. Uh, we've left this one loose because I need to wire, both the pickups need wiring here. We'll have a bridge pickup on one, a neck pickup on another, I believe the, uh, just bear with me one second. The bridge pickup goes on this lug, the neck pickup goes on this lug, which is also joined to this lug, which goes to the hot. And then we've got this one spare terminal at the back there which will be the common from the neck pickup. Lug one, if we go one, two, three, four, five, this side, then six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Nine and one are not used, all the rest are. You see, I've done a little jumper connectors there. This is all soldered on, 
and um, we also have a, set, a little jumper on the opposite side, the white one there. I should have done this white yellow to make things easier actually, I've got yellow pushback push back cloth wire as well but I didn't use it. I've also cut off the extra terminal eye on there for the earth which wasn't needed. We earth this from the opposite side, we don't earth that lug like we do on a regular um, connection. Uh, we just earth these two bottom terminals, this side of a pot casing and I've done ran the earth from this side of the pot casing there to there. I've done the same with the, uh, I've changed the capacitor to a 0 0.047 capacitor. I've earthed both to the side of the pot so it leaves the top of the pot just for all the earth connections on the guitar itself coming from various cavities and what have you. I've also decided uh, to paint the inside of all of the cavities with, um, what do you call it? 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 Insulating, not insulating. The paint stuff. You know what I mean. Yeah, it'll come to me in a minute. But anyway, that is done. All I need to do now is wire the pickups onto this and uh, all the earth connections on the back of that pot, and that is ready. So, really pleased with how it's come out. It is really neat. It looks fantastic. And I love these Mullard mustard capacitors. So, I think that looks really, really great. Like I say, I changed this pot for the 250k. I have a 300k volume pot. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Um, there is a way if my pickup is too dull, any pickup is too dull or too harsh uh, on this setup, I can put a capacitor in line on the hot wire of the pickup, depending on which one is harsh or which one is muddy or whatever. And then uh, we can cut out those uh, values. Um, that cause that either harshness or dullness. So we'll see what we do. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But anyway, really pleased with how that's gone. Uh, my wiring has come on quite a lot in the last couple of years. You know, it's something I really, really had to practice at. It's one of those things I was not naturally good at, but that looks pretty good to me right now. Nah, really, really pleased. Stay tuned, guys. So that's just about as much as I'm doing tonight. Uh, shielding paint was what I was trying to remember earlier. I can't do any more wiring on this until I've got the shielding paint uh, to go in there and shield all this area, you know where I routed out yesterday, let's get the right way up, uh, beautiful routing, what I need to do is I'm going to remove that screw holding that earth wire in there, we're going to paint all that with shielding paint, uh, get it all back in, I don't have to shield this cavity anymore because I've got a humbucker in there, not a single coil so it doesn't need shielding so I don't need the shielding wire in there. That shielding wire for that cavity by the way under the bridge pickup is actually on the bridge pickup itself. So things we're not going to use it. Well, something else I've just done, the input jack. I've tied it, uh, tied it all up. I've insulated both ends. One is earth, uh, one is hot. And I've insulated all the way down so it's going to keep it nice and neat inside the guitar. And we have the hot wire and the earth wire there so we know where they go. That just keeps things really neat inside uh, once that's in there. But like I say, can't really do anything now until that contact, uh, that shielding paint gets here. So I may as well remove this. I've labelled up all the wires where they go. I've also shortened the bridge pickup wire. Just move this out of the way. And that's the earth wire taken out. Shielding wire. I need that obviously to ground to the back of the pot. There will be five or six wires going to the back of the volume pot. It is why I've left a lot of room. In fact, I've left all the room because the earth from the switch is on the side and uh, the capacitor and the earth wire going to the other pot are on the side. I've left all that room on top. I might even, I'm considering soldering, uh, soldering a washer on there somehow. It'd be good if I had a lug. If I could solder a washer on there, I could wire all the washers, all the, all, uh, solder all the wires to a washer and just solder the washer on top of the pot there and it would have everything grounded. I'm sure there's a way I could do that. I'm going to look into it, but I'm going to look at getting some L-shaped grounding lugs for the backs of pots. It's going to make things a lot easier. I could make one out of a loop of copper wire, uh, this kind of stuff. In fact, it is something I may consider. I've made them before. So I think it's some 22W AWG, is it? I could fashion something out of that. Uh, but let's see where we go with that. If we get a decent sized washer, I could solder a washer on there. That's probably going to be the best bet. So anyway, this is on hold until my shielding paint arrives. It could arrive tomorrow, uh, which will be a Wednesday. Let's hope and pray for that. And um, that's me done for today. I'll get back to you later.
Right then guys, really, really eager to get this Telecaster done, but gotta be patient. I'll tell you for why. Got a delivery today from uh, Charles Guitars. Blah, 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 blah. Guitar conductive shielding paint. And I'm gonna need two coats. Oops, and there you go. I'm gonna need, oh, that's a slippy bottle. Wow, amazing. It's like grease. Anyway, I'm gonna need two coats of this and you've got to let it dry for 24 hours between coats. So even if I get it on today, and it's now coming up for uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon, 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, 2 p.m. a day after, it will be when I'm able to get the guitar all put together. So we uh, got to be really, really patient. So I'm going to paint this on the guitar shortly. Um, when I've done a couple of, of other things. Uh, I didn't just get the paint with... Um, uh, with uh, the package, I also got I got a whole kit that so gave me two pieces of wire, which you use to conduct certain parts. I won't need that. I have I have spools of electrical wire for guitar work. They also send two oiks of uh, shrink wrap tubing for your input jack, which I've already done my input jack. Showed you yesterday, I believe. Mine's already done. I've already thingy all that, earth all that, uh, shielded all that. And I've also shielded the whole length of the wire. So I won't need that. Then you get a little bit of copper tape uh, to shield from the side of the wall, blah, 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 to the top of the uh, control plate, uh, like this kind of scenario. I'll stick that on there and we'll have a little bit under there, like so. Blah, 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 sticking down the wall or going this way and sticking down on the wall. That should work and the screw will go through it. I'll make sure I get that all sorted out. You know, a little stirrer, I mean, come on. A little stirrer, it's been nicked out from McDonald's, and uh, more importantly for me, a brush to brush it on with. Fantastic! So, I'm going to stick a couple of coats of that on. You also get a little oiky screw thing for your earth wires, a little two hold grommety thing that you screw in. I won't need that, that's too, too small to lose. I'd like to bigger one than that anyway. But uh, that's all there. So, got everything I need to shield the cavity. Uh, the other control plate, everywhere else that needs shielding is shielded. So I'm going to crack on with that. I'm going to swap this, uh, stop any confusion, I'm going to swap this white cable in there, white wire, for yellow, as it should be, uh, just for my peace of mind. I'm going to go with the pots I've already shown you. Got 300k volume pot and a 250k push, push tone pot, which will split the humbucker. So that's it, I've already explained all this, so I don't know why I'm repeating it. Um, I will paint the cavity today give it a second coat tomorrow and uh, all be well two days time I can come back we can get the guitar uh, all finished I can get plugged in it and we can listen to what it sounds like fantastic and here we are two or three days later it is Sunday afternoon and everyone knows I don't work on a Sunday afternoon and to be honest I'm not long back from church uh, but I'm not working today am I this is my guitar my guitars are not classed as work with my project and there you go and I've painted the cavity with the insulating type paint, shielding paint, and I'm just about to peel off the tape and see how it's gone. I know it's gone well. The hardest thing about this was um, waiting 24 hours for the first coat to dry before I could apply another coat, then put another coat on and waiting 24 hours again, which I've managed to do. And now the whole cavity area is, I'm just peeling off this tape. You don't need to see me do that. But the whole area is shielded. And I've also, I've done a couple of other little things uh, since I last filmed anything. Really nice, this tape coming off. And as you can see, I did mask the area, so we shouldn't have any paint on the top of the guitar, which would be really, really good. I'm sure I haven't. No, I haven't. That's brilliant. But also, while I've been away, I have rewired the control plate. Now, let's just have a look here. Give that a little wipe. I'll give it a proper wipe later anyway, but there you go. And that is the cavity now. If you remember, I routed this area to 33 millimeters depth, and I have painted all this area, and I've painted all the areas again anyway. So we have great shielding in there. And what we're doing is I'll be putting a strip of copper tape from here onto the top. So when the metal plate hits, it will ground the metal plate, the control plate on the top as well. So any issues we've got with buzz or hum or whatever, uh, we will eradicate. Not that I had any anyway, because I didn't. Anyway, let's get back to the control plate, which is now done. And as you can see, I did it with white K2 
cable before, but I decided to put the yellow on there as it should be, so I've redone it. And that's alright, that's wired perfectly. When I'm ready for the pickups to be wired to there, and that lug there, and that would be great. And the, the shielding, what I'm about, with the copper tape, the copper tape will go under here to shield this whole area. Everything's going to be well shielded. Uh, not that it wasn't, anyway, we're shielding through the pots anyway, I believe, through here. But yeah, it's going to be great. So that is going to look, let's just show where we are. And like I said, if I really wanted to, I could have had this on reversed. Some people do do a reverse. Doesn't look quite right to me. I find that that doesn't get in my way when I play, so I'm going to put this on the normal way. And it fits, and it's wonderful, and it's great. You can see also I've got the push-pull working. Oh, push-push, sorry. They're both level, working fine. So I'm going to get that wired in today now. So that is going to be fantastic. The pickup. It's all ready to go in. Bridge pickup. And um, I'm ready to go. Something else I did is I separated the earth wire because you have to separate or earth this uh, cover separately. So what you need to do is break that wire and solder a separate wire onto just this area, which is for shield. So that's all done. So I've got that all done now. So the wire is ready to be done. So I'm going to do that this afternoon. Um, as an A side to that, I bought this pickup because it was not expensive. 17 quid, it's an Arte, and it's supposed to be a really good pickup. But I really, really wanted Seymour Duncan Little 59 in there, and they cost like 75 80 quid. I went and bought one the other day, I got one for £35 on Facebook groups. So I've got that if I want to install that at a later date. Anyway, I will compare, obviously, but I might just go buy myself another Telecaster. So stay tuned. Right, I have somewhat moved on a little bit since you were last here. Uh, give me one second just to turn off my phone or turn on for sound. And all the electrics are in. I've actually had the guitar set up and played and it sounds fantastic. But what I'm going to do is I want to show you something. And something I forgot to mention. When it comes to the final bit of earthing or the final bit of grinding. And you see the plate all in there. I want to show you this little bit. And I hope you can see it under there. And look at that piece, little copper strip there. You see it? And that is down. It's, glue, it's basically stuck to the paint. On the inside of a cavity there and I fold it over a couple of times it's sticky double-sided sticky and that makes connection with the grounding plate there and that's what gives me my earth or my ground on my control plate now like I say I've had this guitar set up and plugged in and it's exceeded my expectations uh, it sounds absolutely amazing just while I'm talking to you I just need to get this a wire on my neck plate moved out of the way because that pot sits on it and we don't want it sitting on it I just want it sitting there flush and that's it, I've got it in flush now. So I'm just going to put the screw in while I talk to you. And yeah, I've had this guitar plugged in. Wow, what can I say? This pickup cost me, I believe, 16 or 17 pounds. I can't remember, I think it was 16 pounds 99 in English money. 16 pounds 99 sterling, that's say, say, for argument's sake, let's say 17 pounds. That is about 19 euros. American dollars, it will be about 23, 24, maybe 25 American dollars. It sounds amazing. It certainly exceeded my expectations. And the fourth, we have four positions. First position, bridge only. Second position, bridge and middle. Third position, uh, not bridge and middle. First position, bridge only. First, second position, bridge and neck. Third position, just neck. Fourth position, bridge and neck in, I believe, is it series? I believe it's in series, normally it's in parallel or the other way around. Also, I do have now a push pull or a push push on these coils, coil split. This works fantastic in the single mode with it out. It's just like a normal telecaster, except we've got the fourth, which is in, in series, both pickups. Uh, so we have that option. Then we have it push it in. We have the full humbucker. Now that does sound amazing. This guitar does exactly everything I wanted it to do. It sounds just like a Telecaster in single coil mode. That is with the push push up. Press it down, we go into full heavy metal mode on the bridge pickle. It's just fantastic. The variations in tone you can get from this are so much better because you've got an extra fourth position and you have the push push split on the humbucker. This guitar exceeds my expectations in all ways. It's just absolutely fantastic. I paid for this guitar. £605 including the hard moulded case. I had to drive to Birmingham to fetch it, probably cost me £25 in fuel. 
I've spent extra money on a pickup and parts. So I've probably spent, it's probably cost me under £700. This is a 2007 Fender American Standard Telecaster. Look at it. It is absolutely beautiful. Check on there. Made in USA. It's just absolutely wonderful in all departments. I absolutely love it. I also want to replace these, by the way, these ferrules, because the ones, not that they didn't fit, these didn't fit either, but the other ones were, uh, there was one missing. And it had had a replacement, which wasn't right, so I bought this. So this has probably cost me £700. So what are you thinking now? You're thinking, oh, wow, it's great, all that work you've done on that bit, but uh, can we hear it? I want to hear it. And yes, you can hear it. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to insert a piece of audio, a video audio, after I've finished what I'm talking about right now. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to finish what I'm talking about right now, because I've got the guitar done. I'm going to stick some audio in there. I'll just play a few chords here and there in different positions. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to summarise exactly what I've done to this guitar. So, enjoy the audio, and uh, I'll be back shortly. Okay, so we're going to go through a few sounds on this guitar, now I've modded it. And I'm just going to go through some clean. I'm playing through a Fender Superchamp X2 uh, combo, an all valve modelling amp of all things, believe it or not. We are on channel 14 on the clean channel. I do have a Super Overdrive, Boss Super Overdrive, this is a modded one. I've actually got a stock one where our guitar plugged into that, it's not on at the moment. But we're just going to go through some clean sounds just to show the variations on the switching uh, that I have modded in this guitar. And I have gone with a four way switch, four, three, two, one. I've also gone with a push pull pot on a humbucker pickup. This is an Artec um, hot humbucker, hot rail. I can't remember the exact model name of it, but it gives me a humbucker option. Uh, the push push. If I push it all the way in, we're in, all the way in, we're in humbucker mode. If I push it again so it comes out, we are on single coil, which gives us Telecaster mode. So this should sound like a re on, and on the first three, these first three positions should, like, should sound like a regular Telecaster. Bridge position, single coil bridge position, bridge and neck, single coil bridge again. Single coil bridge, single coil neck together. The fourth position, what that does is, it's bridge and neck together, but it's in series. Now in normal mode, they're in parallel. In this mode, it's an extra one, it's, it gives an extra deep bass and a higher output. Listen to this. that with position one where it's in parallel so it should be the extra series mode so that is telecaster mode always on a single coil let's push this in we're now on double coil both humbucker coils and listen to the volume different single coil push in for full humbucker so full humbucker mode, just this pick up. That's both pickups in parallel. Just which one? Oh, this is both pick. Oh, tell a lie. That's just a bridge pick up. This is both pickups in parallel. Just the neck pick up. Both pickups, but in series. Full humbucker, by the way. Listen to the difference. So that is in humbucker mode, single coil mode, humbucker mode. Just a neck pickup, neck and bridge in parallel, single coil. So you get the idea. That's in regular mode, bridge and neck, full humbucker. This is in parallel mode, full humbucker and neck. Mm -hmm. 
That series mode at this end is absolutely fantastic, it's massive. A little bit of drive, see what difference that makes. That's going to give us a much bigger sound. So as this sound with some drive, well, amazing, and it's the reason I put a humbucker in, is because I want this to be a regular Telecaster, which it is in single coil mode with that out, but we've got the extra series bridge and neck together, but I also want to get that so I can play metal, because I do play, I've been playing metal for years, most of my guitar life, so I wanted that option of a full humbucker in the bridge position. And we're going to go onto a gain channel, we're going to turn the drive off, the drive by the way, We've got the level straight up at 12 o'clock, we've got the tone straight up at 12 o'clock, we've got the drive just breaking up. Let me get you. That's the clean sound, that's humbucker clean sound. Bottom of drive. So we're just getting into break up there, beautiful sound. takes us in to break up. Again with it off. So what we're going to do is we're now going to go onto a drive channel we're going to really give it some. I'm going to got the gain on for so it's not mega gain but I just want to show. So let's go. So with this sound I'm going to play something. because it's a different style to me but I'm just going to play something a little bit different not too much gain, gain is only on four on the amp but we're just going to play some on the bridge and neck pickup we've got the bridge pickup split into single coil and this to me is basically a driven Telecaster sound <laughs> beautiful high gain, not a super high gain, but a lovely driven Telecaster sound. That's in the series, we can play it in the parallel as well. Single coil, single coil, give it a go on here. How much better does it sound in that series? And that's the reason I've done this mod to get these type of sounds. You know, the extra sound on the fourth selection there, just absolutely beautiful. And now I'm going to go into full humble command, I'm going to turn up again, and we're going to go to full metal mode. I'm going to play a couple of tunes here. Uh, volume, just about okay there. We'll try something out. <laughs>
get any range of sounds we want on this. My favourite sound for a Telecaster using gain is this one, single coil, uh, in series, it's just beautiful. <laughs> If I drop to, go to, well I'm actually in E flat tuning, E flat standard or D sharp standard, so I'm down off a semitone, I should have mentioned that earlier. Absolutely wonderful. those little sound clips there a uh, few mistakes in there have left to me uh, it's no big deal I just want you to get the idea of what all this new switching is all about with the push push and the four-way selector and the new pickup you know the thing is about this pickup I love it that much let me just show you something hot pan fire a second I went and bought I always wanted to try one of these and I went and bought one what have I done with it Duh -duh 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 -duh. this is fantastic one. I went and bought myself, I don't even know where I've done with it, a Seymour Duncan Little 59 uh, bridge, Telecaster Bridge Pickle. I have no idea what I've done with it. It's knocking about somewhere, is it in the back somewhere? Bear with me. Whoops, it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. Don't know what I've done with it, but I've got one. Let me go look in the drawer again. <laughs> I really, really thought it was in that box here. It is not, so I don't know what I've done with it. Lost it. Um, can't be far away, show my wife. Anyway, ignore that. So I was waiting for one, and they're about, I think they're about 75, 80 quid. And I thought, I'm not paying that for one. I'll get one of these, I'll get the Artec one. It was 16, 17, 18 quid, this. I think it was 16, 99. Anyway, lo and behold, I got this, this arrived, the Artec. I started fitting it, and the, um, See what Duncan Little 59, I, one came up for 35 quid on Facebook on the sales pages. I thought I made that straight away. So I made that. I had it, it got it cost me 41 quid posted. And I thought if this isn't any good, I'll put it in here. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not taking this pickle out of this guitar. I absolutely love it. This is my favourite guitar of all the guitars I have. It's an absolute stunner. There's not a mark on it. Look at it. Well, reason no, I dinged it there last week, that's alright, but look at it. It's fantastic, it sounds fantastic, plays fantastic. It does need a new set of strings on there. This is an old set I just use for testing guitars. And these can go in the bin, they're really, really old. But I will stick a set of 1046s on this, on Diodario's. The tuning I've opted for on this, so far, is a, it's E flat standard. So it's just down one semitone, or sorry, half a semitone. Um, 
it's just wonderful, or D sharp standard. So it's down half a semitone, like I say. I will have to tune it back, if I use this in church, I will have to tune it back up to E, or I used to, I would have to capo everything, or I use my strap, whatever, but this guitar, I absolutely love it, it's fantastic. Uh, and like I say, what I've changed is I've changed the pickup, so I've got an Artec hot rail in there. Pots I've gone for, I've got a 250k linear alpha push push pot there, and I have a 300k CTS vintage type pot on there rather than the 250. The capacitor I used was 0 0.047 whatever farad that is uh, capacitor. Gone with some uh, regular cloth wiring. Oh, you've seen it all on the video anyway, just beautiful. And that's all I've really done. I've shielded the cavity, uh, all the cavities using shielding paint. Uh, which is the first time I've used that, that was an experience. And that's it, and the guitar, apart from that, has had a setup. I've not touched the nut, I've not touched any of the frets. This guitar's cost me, with all the modifications and everything, with the moulded Fender case, it's cost me under £700. Maybe with the fuel going to Birmingham and back, maybe just over £700. It's an American... It's an American Fender Telecaster standard Telecaster. Fender American Standard Telecaster for under £700 with a hard case, absolutely amazing and with the modifications I've done, I absolutely love this guitar so I think I'm there with the pickups I could try the little 59 in there but I don't think I'm going to swap that Artec out so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to get myself another Telecaster aren't I? Funny I say that because I do have a Japanese Fender body in my drawer over there and I have a warm of neck going to me. Now the warm of neck is not a Telecaster neck but it is a Stratocaster neck but it's a reverse headstock one. So I can build myself up a new Telecaster. I think I'm going to do that and I'll stick with a little 59 in there and that will give me two Telecasters. One will be a hybrid. It will have a Telecaster, it will have a Fender body and a warm of neck and it's a, it's a, it's a maple, it's a, not a flame maple but it's a maple neck, it's brilliant. So I will have a hybrid Fender and I will have a full American Fender. So absolutely laughing it's brilliant so this has been a fantastic project i've absolutely loved working on this i love this guitar so much it's just it's right there isn't it it's right up there look at it so my pride and joy my favorite guitar who'd have thought it you know back in the day when i started out with concrete socks in 1984 my punk band there you know and we were pretty successful we toured europe three or four times and we, we released five albums in all i record i wrote the first three i left the band after the first three albums even though it's my band. But I said back then, I've never owned a Gibson or a Fender. And it's strange, the last couple of years, all I've really owned are Fenders and Gibsons. I love Fender guitars, just amazing. This is fantastic, my favorite guitar. And there you go, I've sold my metal guitars bar one. And I, I now have two Fenders, I have a Fender Stratocaster and a Fender Telecaster. Amazing, isn't it? But what a fantastic project this has been. I'm gushing, I'm really excited about this guitar. So, all I need to do with this guitar now is Get a new set of strings on there. Make sure the top E string is under the string treat, isn't it, at the moment? I didn't, I've just noticed that just now. Get some new strings on there. Decide what tuning I'm going to be playing in. And that is it. So what a fantastic project this has been. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. From the day I got this guitar, I, I've been in love with it. And we've got through all its problems, you know, and I've managed to sort them out with the, the ex over the last owner. There's nothing to worry about over there. It's just a fantastic guitar and I've got such a great deal, so praise the Lord for that. You know, it's all down to the Lord at the end of the day. I've got such a great deal on this guitar and it's fantastic. And that is just a £16.99 bridge pickup in there. Brilliant. So I am Victor Christian. I'm a very proud owner of a Fender American Standard Telecaster 2007 model. Um, I am your fret friend. Stay tuned to my channel. Keep tuning in, keep supporting me, keep sending your messages. I love answering them. I, I thank you so much for your support. Um, but this project is done, so go and check me out at facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. This is a wonderful project finished on one of my own guitars. Absolutely loving it. So God bless you all. Be good to each other. And I'll see you soon.